Hey guys, Jules the Pool Girl here, and we're gonna talk a little bit today on testing water that requires an acid or base demand. Um, when would I require that? What do I use to determine that? What do the findings mean when I do get them, and how do I properly dose the pool? Um, so I'm gonna try and do a little demonstration for you here. I realize everything is backwards. So we're gonna take our testing decanter, and the one on the right says pH, and it is the larger. And if you turn it to the side, you're just gonna see that there's that little line there. So go ahead and fill her up to the line. Not too much, not too little. We wanna have um, exact measurements here. So then we're gonna take our Taylor test pH indicator, which is number four. And then it's really important when you're testing for anything that you get even sized drops. And the bottles are actually designed to accommodate that need. Um, they are gravity drops, so what that means is you hold it directly up and down gently. Um, you don't want to tip it sideways, you don't want to flick it like that, because that's going to that's gonna produce uneven drops and give you a tinted sample. So what you do is you just hold it directly up and down, like I said, and the drops are going to come out on their own. You don't want to be anxious and squeeze it. So we're going to do five drops. Okay, make sure you put your lid on right away and make that habit your little dealio on here. Now you're not going to want to shake this, you're just going to tip it um, once, maybe twice, because we're just going to evenly mix the reagent in there. Okay, then you're going to want to look at it immediately in a northern light or against a white piece of paper. So you can see here that this is probably probably about a 7-8, but we're going to call it um, an 8 just to be able to do this demonstration for you. But anyways, so then we're going to take our acid demand. Uh, reagent, which is number five, if you're using the Taylor test kit, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do nice even drops, but we don't have a set amount because that's what we're trying to do is determine how much acid is going to take to get our water in the desired pH range. So if you're not comfortable with this, do one drop, test it, do one drop, test it. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where you can kind of eyeball based on the on the color, um, and you're going to know it's probably around this many drops, but. Um, at first, you know, better to err on the side of caution. So I'm gonna do three, same even drops. Turn, don't shake. And then there we go. I don't know if you can see, we are at a 7.4, so that's beautiful. Okay, so what does that mean? So we've determined that we need three drops of our acid demand to uh, get the desired pH range. So what we do is we're gonna get our Taylor Pool and Spa Water Chemistry book, and you're gonna find that in the back of your Taylor Complete Test Kit, and it's on page 57. And you'll see there's actually a table here that's gonna break it down, pretty simplistic. Uh, it's gonna give you how many gallons of water and that's up to uh, up to 100,000 gallons and as little as 400 gallons. So if you end up falling in between, yeah, you'll just have to do the math and, and we'll fiddle with that a little bit later. So if you remember, we did three drops, so I'm going to go down to three drops. They are in order by increments of one drop. And then let's just say it was a 10,000 gallon pool for argument's sake. So then I'm going to follow this across till I get to 10,000. And as you can see right there, it's 1.15 pint. So that is pretty cool. And let's just say that it was a 15,000 gallon pool. Well, you're gonna go 5,000, which is 9.16 fluid ounces. And then you're gonna add that onto the 1.15 pint. And that's gonna be your dose. And then, so when we're gonna do base, it's pretty much the same thing. You're gonna fill water up to where it needs to be. You're going to take your number four indicator. You're going to do five drops. Five. You're going to put your lid on. You're going to shake it. And then it's a 6.5, let's say, for argument's sake. Then you're going to take the other one, which is the base demand, which is number six, and you're going to do the exact same thing that you just did with the acid demand. We're going to do one drop at a time until we get the desired color because that will indicate how much product we need to use uh, in this particular case, we'll just say sodium bicarb, um, to be able to raise, raise your pH. So we're going to do one drop at a time. I'm going to do, let's say, three. Oops. Okay. 
and we're not going to shake it. And then there you can see here, 7.4. Beautiful. So we're going to go to our handy dandy Taylor book again. And for the base, it is on page, increase pH using sodium carbonate. We'll use sodium carbonate um, for this one. I know I said bicarb before. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to go down our chart. We're going to use that same 10,000 gallon pool that we had. And we're going to go with three drops. Three drops across for 10,000 gallons is 15.4 ounces. So, and that's going to get you up to the desired range of where you want to be. And that is pretty cool. So if you need to do it, you know, I always say have a calculator here with you if you want to get the exact. All right, so now you know what to do and it should help you alleviate some of that stress of, okay, I know my pH is high, but what do I do to resolve it? And give you a little more confidence in your accuracy of when you're dosing your chemicals. All right, thanks guys and keep on splashing. Bye, this is Jules the Pool Girl.